hello and welcome back to my channel a small nine books i have been missing in action for a long while um but there are reasons for this i was busy i was traveling i went to thailand for three weeks so um there's a lot of stuff happening in my life that i didn't really have time to make a lot of videos uh during that time but hopefully um, I can get back on tomorrow of a consistent schedule. So in this video, we're going to talk about all the Caribbean books that I read this year in 2022. Um, so uh, this year I read seven Caribbean books, which for me means that they are books by Caribbean or Caribbean American authors or Caribbean British authors, like authors of Caribbean heritage. Um, and, um, also books that are largely set in the Caribbean but I most of these books are by authors who are from the Caribbean or have Caribbean heritage so let's just jump right into it um and yeah so I have two physical books and then the rest the other five were um ebooks on my kindle from the library um, which I've been doing a lot of this year so the first one is The Wine of Astonishment by Earl Lovelace. So this is a classic Caribbean novel that you read in school. Um, so I went to school, high school in Barbados and this is something that we read when I was like in form four, fourth form, um, I think, maybe, or third. But anyway, I reread it this year because I just remembered kind of slugging through it. Like, and it's so small, but I remember slugging through it as a child and being like, I don't get it, I don't want to read it. But then I read it this year and I kind of was like, whoa, this is one of the best books I've read. Like genuinely one of the best books that I've read in my life. Um, so this book basically follows um, people living in a village in Trinidad called Bonas and they are practicing the religion called Spiritual or Shelter Baptist, which has been outlawed um, during colonialism, during the colonial period. Um, and they are practicing their religion under the radar, trying to keep it a secret. But at the same time, a really bright boy from this neighborhood, this village, um, becomes a politician and they all vote for him and he wins. And they think that like he's going to go to Port of Spain, the capital, and things are going to change for them. And it doesn't happen. And so you just kind of see this, this struggle between that and then you see how the men in the book have different approaches to changing things. So you have the politician who like wants to work within the system. You have Bolo, the stick fighting champion, who's more revolutionary. And then you have, I forget the other character's name, but he is the spiritual Baptist leader and he has another way of thinking through things. So they all kind of have these different methods of how they think they're gonna achieve change for their communities. Um, and it kind of just shows you the impact of colonialism on uh, indigenous religions. Um, or African religions and yeah, it's a really good book. It's very small, but it packs a punch in my opinion and it's just one of my favorite um, your Favorite books the way he writes is so lyrical also which the way Lovelace writes is just so lyrical You feel like you are in Trinidad like you are in Manas like it just feels so powerful and yeah, so one of my favorite books of all time Okay, so the second book I read physically was for my book club, and it is um, These Ghosts Are Family by Maisie Card. Um, this one, I really enjoyed it. Um, so basically, it has a lot of magical realism in this book, and it follows a family um, of Jamaican heritage um, through their life. And so it's set in Jamaica, the US, and the UK, and basically the dad, of this family has the secret and I'm not spoiling anything here but the secret is that he faked his own death and he has another family and we kind of see how these secrets are permeating through generations of this family going before him and after him and um, it follows it's a multi-generational story where it follows the different descendants and it even goes back in time to follow the ancestors lives and how this family came to be um, the magical realism element lends itself really heavily to like um, incorporating Caribbean folklore and folk tales. So that's really prominent in here. Jamaican patois is heavy in this book. I, I love a book that is in Caribbean language. Like I love a book that speaks in patois or Creole. Like it, it really amps it up for me. 
So this, this one was really good. Um, the ending I kind of didn't really get, and I think I might need to reread it to really understand the ending. Um, but yeah, this was a good one. I do recommend it um, if you like magical realism. Okay, let's head on to the ebooks I read. So the first one I want to talk about is Pleasant View by Celeste Mohammed. So this is a book of short stories, but it's kind of considered a novel in stories in that it is short stories that are interconnected. So each one kind of bleeds into the other one. And basically, um, it just follows, it's set in modern day Trinidad and Tobago, and it follows a cast of characters who are all connected in some way. We see themes of Venezuelan immigration, we see themes of racism, colorism, abuse, um, different things that are very prominent in Trinidad society. And what I love about what Celeste Mohammed does in this book is again, she writes in the way that Trinidadians speak. Um, so if you are somebody who, who's, you know, an English speaker, or you know, um, you speak English but you don't have that, you're not tapped into how Caribbean people speak, it might be a little hard to get into the book. But I think once you like get past that, it really amplifies the book for me personally. Um, I mean, obviously I speak the language, I, so I, I, I understand how Trinidad is speak, but I mean, it, it really is, like I said about Lovelace, it's really lyrical and rhythmic, right? And she writes so well, and she really amplifies these stories. The one thing I will say about the, these stories is that I wonder if she was a bit heavy-handed with the trauma that happened in the, in the book, um, but other than that, it was a good read. I would recommend it to Trinidadians specifically because I feel like it kind of showcases and highlights issues in contemporary Trinidad. So, yeah. The other book I read um, was Where the Rhythm Takes You by Sarah Das. This was for my book club as well, and it was a short and sweet little romance. It kind of gave YA. I don't know if it's YA, but, but the characters in the story are young. I think they're 17, so it kind of gave YA to me. Um, but in this book we follow a young woman or a young teenage girl um, and she lives in Tobago and she works for her family's hotel and when she's at work she sees someone that she knows from her past which is kind of funny to me because her past means like two years ago <laughs> but um, it's a guy she used to date when she was younger not that much younger like two years younger and he's now this famous DJ, this famous superstar who writes songs, who sings, and he has an entourage with him, and she still has feelings for him, but the way he left things off was kind of not good. And he has a new girl now, and she she's forced to kind of spend time with them because her dad tells her she should take time off from the hotel to show them around the island. And um, she's dealing with grief from losing her mom, and it's just a really like it encompasses a lot for, for such that uh, it encompasses a lot for a short book um but i really enjoyed it actually i have never read a book that was set specifically in tobago i thought that was really unique and yeah it was a cute little read and i would recommend it if you are into romance books and if you're into ya join those two together you have where the rhythm takes you plus it's a wee caribbean novel so like I'm also very sorry, like New York is very loud, so I apologize for the noise in the background. Um, yeah, so definitely recommend this to people who are into YA and romances, blend it together. Um, and if you want to see a book that's set in Tobago and also deals with grief, uh, like death of a parent, that's a really heavy topic. So uh, I recommend that if you are into those things, but I'll obviously proceed with caution because there is death of a parent in this book. Okay, the other book I read was Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. And oh my God, I'm so late to the game because everybody and their grandmother read this book in 2019 or something like that, or 2020. I didn't read it. I thought it was a YA based on the cover for some reason. Hello. That was not a YA. This is adult. Okay, a very adult book. <laughs> but no, seriously, I read this and I honestly didn't love it. I was entertained, but by the end, I felt very critical of this book. And for me, Basically what Queenie is about is there's this character called Queenie, she's a black British of Jamaican heritage descent woman, <laughs> that was a 
like a word wrong it just now but she lives in England and she is broken up with by her white boyfriend and she kind of goes on this kind of spiral and starts sleeping with a bunch of people and just having all these issues and you know it's hard to explain but it's a really messy book and a look at a messy woman uh, navigating her early 20s and for me when the way the book fell flat was that I just felt like I didn't know who it was written for like was it written for me as a black person or was it written for a white audience it, it just kind of I couldn't figure out who the book was written for because the things that happened in the book felt really traumatic but like I just felt like it wasn't given a lot of care and she kept running into these white men who were racist towards her and it just felt like over and over again like what is going on and it just felt very cliched and she also didn't like black men because of like her experiences with her father but it wasn't really like expounded upon so I didn't really understand the hesitancy to date black men but the like jumping to date white men who have traumatized her like in the book so it was just a very interesting book and I just I, I felt really bad for the character like genuinely felt bad and I wanted her to win in life but the book itself I just felt like the author missed some things or it fell flat for me personally um yeah I don't know I just didn't really vibe with it that much so it's harder for me to recommend it to anybody yeah. The other book I read was Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid and it was a short and sweet book. I read it super super fast. Like, I think I read it in like one sitting like genuinely. Um, and it is a book that follows Lucy, a teen from an unnamed Caribbean country who migrates to the US at 19 and she is an au pair for a upper middle class wealthy-ish family and she has a lot of uh, issues from her childhood, especially re related to her mother-daughter, a mother-daughter relationship. And her new boss kind of stands in as kind of a mother figure for her. And you see that, that the dynamic play out as well. She's exploring her sexuality. She is having her independence and her freedom for the first time. And it's just a very angsty, and she's raging, really. Like she's very angry at her childhood and she's angry at colonialism and she's angry at her boss for not understanding her and her culture um, and it's just such a good such a good text I think it incorporates so many themes I especially love the mother-daughter theme and there is a quote from Lucy that I want to read because I found it to be so profound and it stuck with me um, I wish once again that I came from a place where no one wanted to go. A place that was filled with slag and unexpectedly erupting volcanoes. Somehow it made me ashamed to come, come from a place where the only thing to be said about it was I had fun when I was there. Um, so I was really impressed by this quote. I was really impressed by Kincaid's writing and her way of incorporating critiques of tourism and colonialism into her works and that just stuck out to me. And I would recommend this book to like anyone, but specifically people who are interested in books that deal with feminine rage and books that deal with mother-daughter relationships, I would definitely um, recommend that one too. This book I read was The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostoni, I think. Yeah, Agostoni. Um, and this is one of my favorite, one of my favorite reads of the year. Um, this is a harrowing look at abuse, gender-based violence, sexual assault, and incest in Trinidad and Tobago. And if those themes are upsetting to you, I would recommend not reading this book because I actually felt very triggered reading it myself. So I would not recommend, I wouldn't recommend it to people who, who feel triggered by these types of themes and topics. Um, but this follows a woman who is turning 40 and she is in an abusive domestic relationship um, and she works in a clothing shop in Port of Spain, Trinidad and she witnesses one day at work a woman be killed by her abusive lover 
and that kind of sends her into thinking about her own situation, her own mortality and just trying to figure out what to do with her own life. At the same time, she reunites with her brother and finds out more information about her family and her childhood and she gets kind of triggered by this and um, she has to like deal with some of these issues that are coming up from her childhood um, and it's just very depressing and very sad really but it's so well written another book that's written in Trinidadian Creole English the same way we speak in Trinidad um, that was really well done for me personally and it's told from her perspective and then it switches off to like a kind of omnipresent narrator um, of when it goes to her childhood bits um, and it actually was long listed for the Women's Prize for Fiction so yeah that's another accolade that it got but it's really hard to recommend this one but I think just because the writing is so lovely and lovely is a, a hard word to use here but the writing itself really is so well done in this book and um, I would recommend that if you are interested in reading this book given the content warnings that I gave in the beginning. That is all the Caribbean books that I read this year. It was only 7 out of 48 books and really and truly I actually want to do better, I want to do more. I did DNF some books this year that were Caribbean books but I might pick them back up. It wasn't that they were bad, it was that I was just not in the mood to read that type of book. Um, so hopefully next year, 2023, I can get on it and make more of my books, Caribbean books. Maybe I can double it to 14. Um, so we'll see. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a happy holiday season.